Hey, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the additional controls in the 3D Planar Tracker. So here's our shot, and our task, perhaps, is to add some animation to this sign here at the end. And it has some nice channels that maybe some stuff can move through, say. So the first thing that you want to think about is where should I put the main frame of the Planar Tracker where I initially set the corners. And in a shot like this, the best choice is definitely at the end, where you have the best view of it, and you don't have any occlusion that you would hear earlier in the shot. So we can start out putting our corner locations. And with something like this, where we've got quite a large object. You know, we can go and zoom in where you have a whole lot more you know, resolution available to, to do the placement rather than just relying on the mini tracker view over there that you know is just for monitoring purposes and not for really high accuracy sort of placement like this. So now I've got my position all set up there and you can see the Tracker pyramid there is pointing in a fairly reasonable direction, so that looks good. So the next thing I'd like to bring your attention to is the fact that we've got a very monochromatic background here. So is there something we want to, to do to take advantage of that? And the answer is yes. Synthize can work on any of a number of different channels of input or on full RGB data. And this is the channel selector that you see over here. And when I click the button here, this is controlling whether I'm looking at what Synthize is seeing or just looking at the you know, original RGB image so that I can you know, look at the, uh, at the actual image. So let's, let's think about what other channel we might want to do. If we go to a blue channel, then you know, we get very little contrast at all. Green we do a bit better, but on red, you know, we get really excellent contrast between the blue background and the, these white channels. So this is really the best choice. The full RGB processing is an option for the 3D Planar Tracker, but, you know, it is going to take roughly three times as long and, you know, a good portion of the algorithms just because there's that three times as much data to be processed. So it, if, it, if the situation doesn't warrant it, we might as well just uh, go with the single processing. The place that the RGB data is warranted is where you have a pattern that has a variety of different colors that are all roughly at the same sort of luminance level. And there, the RGB data can be very useful. So now we've got our channel selected. We've got our main frame set up. So we're ready to start doing some tracking. We need to track and reverse. We'll do that. And now we're off to the races, and we'll see it moving ahead. And as it's doing this, we want to be keeping an eye on this search rectangle here that's showing you where Synthize is looking for the pattern and making sure that the actual location isn't winding up outside of that search rectangle uh, very often. It's okay if, if it goes out a little bit from time to time, but if it goes out too often, then it indicates we need to make the search rectangle bigger and we have controls for that over there. So we'll just keep on watching it as it goes through and once we get through here for a while you notice that all of a sudden the actual tracker rectangle has diverged substantially from the actual pattern. So what's going on there? You know the search rectangle has stayed okay as, as we've gone through this. So if I scrub back through the shot and you look in the mini tracker view, you'll see what's going on is a rather dramatic change in the color of this pattern over the length of the shot. And that's actually pretty typical when you've got a very flat object that you're tracking. You don't see small isolated highlights. You see the entire pattern change due to the different lighting angles, you know, the different relationship between the lighting source, the plane itself, and the camera. 
So you can see very large widespread shifts in the lighting level. So what can we do about that? Well, let's run forward here and see where that really starts to happen. So around here we're still doing well. So just like in a supervised tracker, we can go and reset the search pattern at that point in time. And I did that just by double clicking on this tracker outline. And you see when I do that, it sets corner keys at those locations exactly where they are so there's no change in the field of view or aspect ratio of the rectangle. And the search box has gone away because we've already told it where the pattern is. So because it was already a location that had been searched for, there's not going to be no glitch in the path of the tracker at this location either. So we can do that there in the main camera view with the double click, or you can do it over in the mini tracker view, or tracker mini view, just by right clicking. And that'll either make the set of keys go away or set a new set of keys, depending on whether there's one there already or not. So with some keys in that location, now we can go and proceed further. And you see that indeed it stays on track. And now as this foreground sign comes across, you know, life gets quite a bit worse here. Eventually the foreground sign is covering so much of it that it loses track and flies off basically into the distance. So we have a couple of, of things that we can do about this if we want to improve how long the sign back there stays tracked. One of them actually is to switch to full RGB processing. Here's what the image looks like just with that red channel. You can see that the foreground piece of wood isn't that far away from the thing that we're tracking. But if you uh, look at the, the full RGB, it's, it's, it's different. So another option that we can do is to process this for and track this foreground sign and use that as a mask for the background. So to do that, Let's go, and we're going to go to the beginning of the shot for this guy. We could actually start it like there if we wanted to, but let's just start at the beginning here. We'll drop in some corners. I got something very, very approximate. Actually, one thing, let's just do it. it. Certainly, there's always the possibility at some later time you might want to export that foreground sign also. So let's go grab the field of view of the tracker that we want, that we've set up. We'll save that away as our known camera field of view. Go back to this one. We're going to set it to be a known field of view tracker. The synthize asks if we want to adjust the corners of this, and we'll say yes. And so that made some you know, comparatively small adjustments in the size of it. I'm just going to do some alt drags here to just further tune up these corners. So now we've got something sensible looking for that foreground one. Now to use it as a mask, we're, you know, the thing that actually goes wiping across our nice little sign in the back is this edge over here. So what we want to do now is rescale this foreground tracker. We'll just make it go up to about there. And since this piece of wood is, is actually a 3D entity and it sticks out in front some and then it sticks out in the back a little bit also. I'm just making it a little bit wider just to compensate for how it sweeps around at the side. So we'll see, see how that works out. But we're ready to go at this point. Let's, well, not quite ready, we need to get this guy tracking in the forward direction. 
So we'll let him go. And there you can see this is the edge that we're looking at. So we do have it lined up reasonably well. And it's swept across. You know, eventually it's going to get lost too. But uh, that looked pretty good. So we've got our foreground tracker there. We'll just lock him up. Now we're ready to go back to our real tracker that we're interested in. And I'll be tracking backwards. So let's let it go across. And now you see it really goes almost all the way to the very, very end before it finally loses track. So you can see how effective adding that little masking from the, the foreground tracker was. So now we've got a really a, a good track for the, the guy in the back. We can lock it up and now we're ready to export. If we want we can look at the whole thing in the background. And we've got both of them moving around. So hopefully that gave you an idea of what you can do with some of the additional controls. I'll point out that the, the ordering worked out well in the way that we have it when we created the second tracker and it wound up in the foreground. But if we need to change the ordering around, I just brought up this planar options panel. And here you see the actual ordering. You've got this uh, second tracker that we created is on top of the layer stack up and blocks out the one that we initially created that's in the back. So hopefully this gives you an, an idea of how things go. Take care.